Hey, Tubal Views, welcome back. Today I got something kind of fun and special. It's not terribly new and exciting, but to me it's a little bit new and exciting. And yes, I still have tricolored hair. I don't know why. Leave me alone. I'm old. Well, it's that time of year again. Boat season every year. Cobalt. And this guy just wanted a wash and wax. A little teeny butt for love. That's all he said he wanted. And he also wants the cobalt emblems put back on, which is, as you know, completely awesome. So here's what she looks like before anyone does anything to her. Port side's a little bit worse off than the starboard side, although you can see the starboard side doesn't have all that much in the way of gloss either. And yay, look at these emblems. They're so nice. Clearly, this boat's been detailed at least once. So Herbert and I are going to get into some probably super duty, followed by some heavy cut. And then we're going to wait for the sunshine to look at it and see what it looks like after the heavy cut, just to make sure we got all the nasty oxidation out. And then we're probably gonna hit it with Perfected EXAC because that's what you do with a boat that's got all this nasty, nasty water spots. Oh, and then we gotta take out remnants of the old registration numbers, which is awesome. And the old registration sticker, which as you see those scratches, we should not be putting back in when we take off his 2022 decal. Top side is not all that trashed out. Still probably a little bit of heavy cut, followed by perfected. But this is the main thing to get out. All this. That's just gross. So, here we go. Hey, you know what's first? First things. Yep, let's do first things first. He's got a little transfer mark, a little scuff to the left of the cobalt emblems. I'm gonna go grab some acetone, ta-da! And I'm just gonna wipe that off. It's pretty much that easy. See, that easy. Next thing I'm gonna do is make a garat using 80 pound test line, fishing line. And I'm just gonna work it behind each one of these emblem letters and it basically cuts through the double-sided sticky tape that holds these on. That's that's all that holds these on. I have some better solutions for raised emblems if people want to have them on the sides of their boat, but it seems sometimes people don't want to listen to the detailer because what do we know, right? Anyway, I digress. Basically, just work, work the uh, fishing line back and forth, get the emblems off, try to be really careful. This guy in particular wanted us to clean these up, put new double-sided sticky tape on, and reattach them to the boat. Awesome. I mean, I offered a decal, we offered some different emblems. He wants these original because he, he thought the boat would be more valuable if they were stock. As if there's some sort of concourse level uh, Barrett Jackson auto thing that he's got going on that somehow this boat's not going to be worth as much if the original emblems aren't on. But I assure you, there isn't. Um, there are some boats that actually do increase in value over time but they were made about 50 years ago, uh, 60 years ago. Not a Cobalt. No offense to anyone with a Cobalt. I, I get it. They're nice boats, and now that the company is owned by somebody else who doesn't care about the family's reputation, the resale price has stayed fairly stable for the last couple months slash years. So I get it, but having a stock emblem, one where the T on the port side is broken and the... Uh, little wreath on the starboard side has a little chip out of it. I, I don't see how that's going to save anybody any money over the long term. It's better to either A, get rid of them altogether, B, replace them with a nice three-dimensional decal uh, sticker, or I'm sorry for all my Canadian brothers, decal. God, that's a funny word. Um, or just buy new emblems and have those put back on. But to redo the other ones, the ones I'm taking off, it's kind of a pain in the butt and I really don't enjoy it. So we're gonna charge the guy about 200 bucks to do this, just for funsies, because he wanted them stock. All right, after removing the emblems themselves, I'm just cleaning up and pulling off any of the double-sided tape that I can with a detuned razor blade, and detuned by I've taken the edge off so that I'm not gonna risk scratching this boat. And then anything that's left behind, I pull out the acetone again, wipe that down vigorously, so that there's no adhesive 
on the boat. You might still see some oxidation. You might still see some uh, built up wax compound residue that's just gunked on there. I might, if I find any after doing the final wipe, hit that with a razor blade one more time just to clean it up and make sure that I'm not grinding that in and solidifying it as a permanent part of the boat once I get to the compounding stage. And if you miss the music, so do I. I'm running this in hyperlapse just because it takes an inordinate amount of time, but to help me out today and something I did in the last couple of videos, I'm going to save myself a little bit more time. I'm using 800 grit sandpaper on a random orbital polisher and I'm just running it like one, two on the speed dial just working this enough so that while I'm working back and forth and up and down, I don't actually see the outline of the letters through the dust. That's my goal. I'm not trying to remove them entirely. I'm simply trying to make sure that there's no major difference in the height or the color of where the emblems were as opposed to where they weren't. And if I can get to that point, I'm actually pretty good using Super Duty and Heavy Cut, as you may have seen in the other 300 videos that I have on YouTube. That's right, there's about 300. So why I don't have 200 million subscribers is beyond me. It could be my attitude, although now it's probably my attitude. Anyway, so I'm just gonna work this back and forth, nice and gentle. I'm not trying to dig into the gel coat at all. I'm just trying to smooth it out. Now I'll take that rag that had a little acetone on there and use that as kind of a, a cleaner, just to double check. And then, hey, look at that, super duty. I think you guys know how this is gonna go. So I might, duck out for a second and not talk. Um, actually, you know what? I'm, I, it's what I do. I'm going to talk. So I'm going to hit my edges. You can actually see cobalt. Uh, the letters are still pronounced. And the reason for that is they're ghosting. Um, where the decal or the emblem was, that gel coat had not received any sort of wax for the entirety of the boat's life. And so the gel coat actually is uh, empty, for lack of a better word. It has no oil to it. So it's always going to absorb a little bit more of any product that you put on there, specifically because, well, it's empty and it's dry and it wants to absorb stuff to saturate itself. Uh, where the emblems weren't, that's where the compound just kind of glides over and it doesn't seem to soak in too much and that's why you don't see those dark letters nearly as uh, much now as you did just a moment ago, partly because the Super Duty, as well as the Heavy Cut, actually started to absorb into the gel coat and now all I'm trying to do is make sure that I cannot see the actual letters themselves through the sheen of the uh, of the compound. So here you've got me going back and forth and I'm only focusing on the top part of this section of the hull. In other words, I know there's a lot of gel coat below this where my wheel isn't really touching. I'm not specifically focused on that. Right now I have a dedicated plan of action and the plan is get rid of that ghosted image. If I can do that, then I'll worry about the rest of the boat. But for right now, that's one of my only things uh, that I'm focused on. And when I'm grinding on it, I'm constantly looking to see if I can see any, any hint of those emblems and decals, or emblems, I guess, not decals. Um, and that's all I'm focused on. The, it's kind of like a giant edge to me. And as a matter of fact, I'm kind of working an edge right now, specifically um, getting up underneath that lip so that when I go fast, I don't actually have to put my buffer up in there, making it so that I don't get swirls if I do this right. And hopefully, I'm doing this right. But we'll find out pretty soon, because uh, I think we're getting to the end of this particular step. And after this, I'll probably wipe it down and we'll take a look and see what we can see. And it doesn't look that bad. So now I'll go down and focus on the lower section of that hull and I'll try to blend the two together. So I'm gonna go back to Super Duty 
And this will be good because I did leave some scratches from the first pass of Super Duty because I was getting kind of aggressive with it. So this will allow me to blend these two sections together and kind of minimize those scratches that I put in when I was getting super aggressive, putting the buffer wheel up on edge. You'll also be interested to note, perhaps, that today I'm not using the Quick Connect adapter by 3M. Instead, I'm just using a spindle nut and a screw-on double-sided wool pad. They're both by 3M, so it's not like I've escaped them at all. I still use their stuff on a regular basis, and no, I'm not sponsored by them. Um, they just seem, seem to have the best stuff. And there I'm showing you, you can still see the word cobalt. After the heavy cut had already been on there, putting on some new Super Duty, you can see that it still wants to absorb stuff. So after the heavy cut had been on there and then I wiped it off, it probably kept soaking it in and that's why the surface is showing the ghosted letters of cobalt. You know, I could just be making all that up too. It might be a completely other reason. Either way, I don't care. For some reason, when you put a product on some place of a boat that had a decal or an emblem, it just reacts strangely. So here I am cross-cutting, 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 hitting edges, making sure they're looking good, uh, getting a little bit more blendy. And it's not really a word or a verb, but you get what I'm saying. And now I'm going to speed up a little bit and work this top and bottom together, hopefully get the finish looking about the same and prepared for the next pass of heavy cut. Okay, if you actually miss the music that badly, I'll make you regret it. Don't worry, be happy. Don't worry. Don't worry, be happy. I don't know the words. So I'm just going to repeat. Okay, here apparently I'm showing you that some of the uh, boat did indeed come off. But following this, it should look pretty decent. And hey, what do you know? It looks, well, fairly decent. For super duty, get off me. Let's do some heavy cut and see if we can make this uh, gloss turn into a, you know, a shine. I think we can. So let's go through the steps, shall we? I'm going to spread this all out. Then I'm going to work on my edges. This will be the first edge. There's this little lip underneath the gunnel. Um, there was a spot there that I didn't like. It's kind of a scuff, so I wanted to give it a little extra touch and I clean it out. And then right under that is a little bit of a lip. And so I'm going to hit that top inch a little bit more aggressively than most people would think. And for funsies, because I know I'm going to work on the back shoulders a little bit, um, I'm just going to start on those just briefly. But then I'm going to do my little snail crawl all the way across the bottom. And I'm just doing this just like I did the top specifically so that when I get into the middle, I don't have to worry about my edges. It's kind of like working in a coloring book when you were a kid. You hit your borders really well, and then you can just kind of F off and not worry about it when you get to the middles. And if you do that right, you're not worried about going outside the lines. And that's kind of the goal to alleviate leaving a bunch of swirls in your finish when you're all done. In other words, if you focused on the entire piece as one section and you were working the middle and you touch the top and you touch the bottom and you touch the top and you work the middle, you're fighting a lot of potential for swirl everywhere. Every time you touch the top and that pad changes its geometry, you're causing a swirl. Every time you roll off that bottom edge at speed, that buffer wheel changes its geometry, so you're risking a swirl. Whereas if you hit your edges really aggressively and get a nice gloss, then hit your middles, you alleviate about 95% of the chance to leave a swirl because you're just going flat. And if you're going flat, you generally don't leave a swirl. That's not a promise, it's just generally. Okay, well, my Bobby McFerrin is actually my best genre, so if I failed miserably at that, I don't know what I can do to offer you any sort of entertainment whatsoever. Um, yeah, I apologize. We could talk beer. Um, IPA is kind of my thing. Uh, I really like Stardust by Elysian. Also a freaking huge fan of Melvin Brewing. Their IPA out of a can is surprisingly good. Uh, Sierra Nevada makes a stable IPA. 
Although when they came out with one called Wild Hop IPA, oh my God, was that good. All right, let's get back into this boat, shall we? Let's take a look at it once the uh, junk is wiped off. I think it came out pretty nice. In fact, I'd go ahead and say it came out really nice. I still have a little bit to go on this shoulder. I've left almost half of it, a little bit more than half of it, undone. I need to take the swim step off to get to this transom area, and I know that i got to get in there. So what I'm trying to focus on is the curved piece right here uh, to the right of your screen. The emblems where they were, of course, and then kind of as that shoulder blends into the transom. That's what I'm really focused on right now. Once I get the swim step off, I'll blend everything together in the back. And hey, because we used Heavy Cut after we used Super Duty, you know we're going to use some Perfected EXAC. Now this is an old Perfected bottle, but trust me, it's loaded up with Perfected EXAC. There's how much I've got on my pad, and that's going to cover almost everything that I've touched thus far um, and it's all the same stuff I'm gonna spread this out I'm gonna hit my edges and then I'll start working on the middles and there you can see me working on that curved piece it's one of my OCD things I really like to get the wheel to find the perfect angle to cut that so that it just has a sheen to it and a shine and it looks like it just popped out of the mold um, if I can do that great if not I'll keep trying. It's something that I just push and push and push until I finally get the right pass. And what really kills me is on occasion when I'm doing the flat section, I might dip a little bit too far into that curved section, that convex, uh, sorry, concave little indent on the back shoulder. And then I have to, because of the OCD, go back over the entire thing again because, well, that's not perfect now. And I need it perfect, otherwise I can't go to bed. And if I can't go to bed, then I can't work tomorrow. And it's a whole cyclical thing. So. Uh, work a little bit on these shoulders and like I said I'm not really focusing on the entire rear shoulder of this section I've still got some work to do that I have to plan for later and so what I want to focus on is just working this perfected down to nothingness and getting a fairly good shine on the outside of this boat anywho getting back to this uh, you'll notice that the buffer wheel stays fairly flat uh, while I do change hands every now and then that's just to give one hand a break or maybe I notice a little hoppiness and vibration in the buffer from the buffer wheel for no good reason um, and I thought maybe changing hands might help so sometimes when you see me change sides it's just that sometimes when you see me change sides it's because maybe my hand or wrist or elbow is getting a little sore and I want to change it up without pulling the wheel off of the boat itself I find that pulling the wheel off the boat tends to dry out the compound on the wheel and if I leave it on there and I transition from one hand to the other without taking it off the boat it just seems to stay more wet longer all right well, here we go And this is just me highlighting, hitting these concave sections of what I like to call the uh, shoulders of the cobalt. I'm trying to get them as good as I possibly can. Knowing that I'm going to hit this area later, I want that looking good. And speaking of later, you can see what I'm working with. So to get this shine out of that, eh, I feel pretty good about it. And considering that you can't see the cobalt emblems or where they used to sit, I also feel really good about that. Being able to read detail in my watch. Eh, also feeling pretty good. So all these things are making me feel pretty good about this. That being said, I know I still have some work to do, and I'll still have to do some blending later. Now here we are on the starboard side of the boat, and I've gone through most of the same things that I did on the port side without your knowledge. I apologize. But I just wanted to show you what it looks like before I get into the next part, which I think is actually kind of fun and a little bit exciting. Um, because this guy wants the emblems put back on, he basically wants a detailer to go through all these extra steps that he doesn't have to. I decided to have some fun with the oxidation that was in the boat. So you see the juxtaposition between one side and the other. One side's nice and clean, it's got a good reflection, the other side's a little chalky. As we get back here, I left a little bit of that oxidation in the shoulder. And I'm going to have some fun with it, and I want you to watch and see what I do. So for two reasons. One, because the guy originally said it just needs a light wax, which, no, it absolutely needed a lot more than a light wax. And two, because he wants his emblems placed back on the boat. 
which is asking us to go through a lot of hurdles and hassles. So we have a decal. I put it over the oxidized section of that shoulder and I hit it with heavy cut, lots of heavy cut to be precise. Then I hit it with perfect it and then I waxed it. Then I removed the decal. So what you're seeing isn't a decal. It's just the oxidation that was in this boat that only needed a light wax. Ha <laughs> ha, you can't wipe that off. Let's take another look at that, shall we? Tee hee. Now you might think this is kind of mean for a detailer to do to a customer, but it's an easy fix if they really have a problem with it. Again, this is a decal placed over oxidized gel coat. Then it was compounded and the decal was removed. And these are the results. I think it's a pretty good calling card, don't you? I mean, they probably won't forget where they had it detailed last. See, I have a sense of humor. Anyway, subscribe, give me a thumbs up if you like. If you have a question, throw it at me.